Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India number 51 so we have been discussing about the general perturbation theory and related to that uh, especially the method method of parameter variation or method of varying parameter so in that context we discuss one problem and uh, uh, how does it work okay so the same thing we are going to apply to the orbit problem where the orbit is perturbed by the third body okay Thereafter, we will take into account the other forces. Uh, obviously, we, we will have the planetary force and uh, we will have the aerodynamic drag. Solar radiation drag can also be there, uh, so, uh, solar radiation uh, pressure. So, uh, but we will get confined to up to the aerodynamic one. So, how much I can cover within the, the given number of lectures? It is a uh, still it is not defined because uh, many of the things may require so explanation and that takes a lot of time. So, uh, what I will do whatever can be covered and the rest others I will give as uh, uh, soft copy of the detailed uh, exp materials explained in details quite details. Uh, so, let us start with uh, the problem we have been discussing. So, we remember that the radius vector of the orbit from the center of attraction or maybe with respect to the center with respect to which you are defining the So, let us say that uh, the radius vector is represented as r equal to r t and c 1, c 2, c 3 up to c 6. So, these are the 6 orbital parameters, but now here in this case these parameters are not constants, they are varying. And uh, this is obvious from the figure I have drawn here in this place. So, say this is the initial point. So, at this point you have the velocity vector v which is the same v is the same in true orbit, true orbit velocity vector in true orbit this equal to in osculating orbit, osculating orbit. So, in both the places uh, uh, so, basically at this point velocity vector either in the oscillating orbit or either in the uh, true orbit it is the same. This is your oscillating orbit and already we have defined the oscillating orbit and the uh, true orbit. These are the oscillating and the true orbit. So, satellite is initially say at the point P. this is located at point p here and if there is no perturbing force then it will follow and it will go to q we follow the path of the oscillating orbit it will go to q and of course if the perturbing force is not there so oscillating orbit is equivalent to the keplerian orbit but if the perturbing force is there then because of the change in the velocity at next instant say in a short time this moves from if the force is not present so the this will move from this place to this place while if the 
force is present, uh, so perturbing force is present. So because of the perturbation, it will not move to this place. Rather, it will move to this place, as shown by the green. So the perturbation is causing the orbit to deviate from the what it should follow, okay. and that we have written as r double dot equal to minus del u plus r, where r is the perturbing potential. In the absence of perturbing potential, we will just have r double dot equal to minus del u when r equal to 0, perturbing potential is not there. So, at that time we just get the two body problem and it will of course follow the path shown by the uh, blue uh, blue line or the sky blue line. Okay. So, if perturbing potential is present, so how the parameter will vary? So, what our intention is to get these quantities d c 1 by d t, d c 2 by d t and so on. So, these are the things we are looking for. So, if we know at what rate it is a varying, so if we integrate the corresponding equation, we know the corresponding equation, we can integrate and get the uh, get the uh, parameter at a future point of time. So, we have started with writing r dot. So, we have worked with a simple problem which was d a square x by d t a square plus x equal to r t. Okay. Here in this case, we are going to work with the actual problem. So, in the actual problem, your d r by d t, this can be written as dou r by dou t plus dou r by dou c 1 times c 1 dot and so on c 6 into c 6 dot. So, here this particular term this corresponds to your two body problem. And here in this case also we are writing this as the for osculating orbit. And therefore, as earlier discussed this dou r by dou c k times c k dot summation k equal to 1 to 6 this must be equal to 0. Okay. This part should be 0 because the velocity in the true orbit is the same as in the osculating orbit at any uh, at the point of tangency where they are touching each other. Okay. So, at this point the velocity in the osculating orbit and uh, this is the osculating orbit shown here and the true orbit this velocity remains same and therefore, only this term will stay and the other term will this term will be 0. So, this gives us one equation another equation we can get in terms of the acceleration. So, while we write the equation for the acceleration. So, d a square r by d t a square this will be d by d t d r by d t. <coughs> Okay, so, uh, this d r by d t here in this case, this needs to be replaced by dou r by d t, because from the constraint from this constraint we have r dot equal to we are writing like this dou r by dou t equal to d r by d t using this we can write it in this way 
and this can be further written as do by do t do r by do t plus do by do c k times k equal to 1 to 6 so this we are writing as do a square r by do t a square plus summation do by do c k i am using the summation notation here for making it little compact and uh, this is your r dot or do r by do t r dot we are writing in this way so i will use the notation r dot and times ck dot so ck dot also will be present here in this place so immediately what we can see that this part actually if we go back and here look into this one what we have written here this is r double dot equal to minus del u and which is nothing but your minus mu by r cube r in terms of vector and this quantity is your do a square r by do t a square this quantity is do a square r by do t a square because in this case parameter is not varying if the parameter varies then this is not valid so therefore from here immediately we can see that this quantity do r by do t a square this is minus del u this is 1 and uh, the other equation we name as the other part then becomes summation k equal to 1 to 6 do r dot by do c k times c k dot equal to minus del r. So, what we have got here this is this is one equation let us name this this is one we have already named so we will name this as 2 and this I will name as 3 so you can see that these two equations they are written in terms of ck dot here also it is a written in terms of ck dot so this can be solved for ck dot where k varies from 1 to 6 but the problem earlier we have taken there we did matrix inversion and other things and using that we solved it we will not go by that method Lit the same thing but uh, we have to do exactly the same thing what we have done in the last lecture but we do it in, in a little different way so that it is a convenient to work with. So, we multiply equation 1 minus do r dot by do c j and uh, equation 3 by 
do r by do c j and add them. and add them. So, if we do that, so immediately we can see the first equation was uh, k equal to 1 to 6 do r by do c k times c k dot and then multiplied by. So, uh, multiplying now we here uh, we take the actually what we do this multiplication here means because it is a vector is involved here. So, we will write in terms of the dot product. So, multiplying taking dot product the right word is taking dot product taking dot product of equation 1. with minus do r dot by do c j and equation 3 with do r by do c j and add them. So, here dot product once we take and minus sign. So, minus sign will be here and plus the other one is do r dot by do c k times c k dot both are in both the places c k dot is present and this we have to take the dot product this is dot product here with do r by do c j and therefore, on the right hand side we can see that the quantity will be do r by do c j the for this quantity the equation 1 the right hand side is 0. So, therefore, whatever we multiply that side remains 0 only thing the this equation will count. So, del r it will come as product of del r and which a minus sign and we can immediately see that c dot k this is common here. So, we can take c dot k as a common k equal to 1 to 6 and we can write this as do r by do c j times do r dot by do c k minus c k dot equal to minus do r by do c j dot del r. So, in effect what we are doing we are combining these two equations we are trying to solve these two equations and here we have dot product. So, we put the dot product in mid between. Now, r is defined as x times i cap y times j cap z times k cap and therefore, r dot can be defined as x dot i cap y dot j cap and z dot k cap. So, if we use that notation so immediately we can see that this can be bifurcated into two part uh, uh, three parts each of the term can be bifurcated into three parts and therefore, we will get equation in a uh, format which will involve x y and z x dot y dot and z dot. Another thing I would like to point out though this is not the correct thing to tell, but immediately what we can see that if we 
ignore this dot product and assume that r is a scalar. So, at that time you can see that this is dou r by dou c j and dou r by dou c k dou r dot by dou c j and dou r by dou r dot by dou c k. So, uh, this particular part it appears as determinant only thing that here you we have dot product while we consider the determinant. So, in that case the dot product will not appear, okay. but it is a way of remembering it is easy to remember okay. and once you multiply them so in mid between just place the dot product and your job is done. In fact, later on we will see that r can be replaced by x, y and z and uh, z and uh, r dot can be replaced by x dot y dot and z dot. So, in effect what this equation is going to give us we see it on the next page. So, the quantity which is inside the bracket this quantity this whole thing from here to here this whole thing it is a called the Lagrange bracket and this is represented by C j comma C k and therefore, this is also called the Lagrange bracket method. So, if we take the uh, let us take the this first term we take just this term and work with this dou r by dou c j dot dou r dot by dou c k this is what we have here this term. Okay. So, immediately what we can observe that this quantity is we can write in terms of i cap or either e 1 cap whichever is convenient. So, let us continue with the i cap j cap and we have to take the dot product of this with respect to with uh, the other one dou c k x dot i cap plus y dot j cap and z dot k cap. Therefore, this gets reduced to k cap and then in between dot product so this gives us do x by do c j do x dot by do c k plus do y by do c j dou y dot by dou c k dot product results in a scalar quantities and dou z dot dou c k. Similarly, the other part you can write other part means the second term this term can also be written in the same way only thing here this is dot and the other one is with c k with the subscript k r is appearing. So, there is an exchange of the terms like where y dot is there there the y will become it will become y and where the x is there. So, that part becomes x therefore, the Lagrange bracket the uh, equation we can write as 
this quantity we are writing as C j k in the quantity in the bracket we are writing as the Langrange bracket. So, therefore, equation now this let us write this as 3 equation 4. equation 4 gets reduced to k equal to 1 to 6 and then in the bracket the terms will separate out do x by do c j times do x dot by do c k minus now this becomes do x dot from where this is coming this is coming from the second term from this term. Okay. You do this exercise yourself, I am leaving up uh, it to you. Therefore, we will have a total of <coughs> such three terms dou y by dou c j dou y dot by dou c k do z dot do c k and on the right hand side we have uh, do r by do c j dot del r with a minus c. this also we can expand and you can check what this quantity is exactly. So, on the left hand side this is k equal to 1 to 6 the quantity which is inside this bracket okay, that we write as C j comma c k this is the Langrange bracket summation over and what this quantity is we will do it on the next page and then uh, come back to this point uh, minus del r by this is dot product by with del r this equal to minus del y del c j x times i cap, y times j cap and z times k cap okay. and we have to take dot product with del r, this is a vector, this is a vector. So, this is going to operate on this. So, it is a better to write it this way del r equal to i times dou by dou x i cap this is plus this quantity we are writing here j times dou r by dou y k cap times dou r by dou z and take the dot product with dou x by dou c j i cap dou y by dou c j j cap and dou z by dou c j k cap and this dot product we have to take and there is a minus sign before this. So, this results in dou r by 
डो x टाइम्स डो x बाय डो सी जे प्लस डो आर बाय डो वाई टाइम्स डो वाई बाय डो सी जे and that results in you can see that this is nothing but do r by do c j where r is a function of x y and z therefore we can utilize this information and we can complete this and write here this is minus do r which is a function of x y and z by do c j this is our equation 5 and we need to solve this equation oh, obviously one part we have missed here this is the c dot c k dot so we have need to in introduce this c k dot here in this place and solve for c k dot so if we get the solution for the c k dot so our objective is fulfilled so here your r is the perturbation function this can also be written in terms of c1 c2 up to c6 which is itself a function of x y and z and that the reason i have written here this is r x y z okay with this at hand let us write this cj ck to j equal to jx plus j y plus j z and what these quantities are we can see from this place this quantity is j x this quantity is j y and this quantity in the bracket this is j z so this quantity is being written there okay and we need to evaluate them so j u we can write as already i have written while in for the uh, vector r but here i will write in terms of the scalar for getting jx jy zz what we need to do that replace this u with x y and z and you get the corresponding jx jy and z so the basically your cj ck this lagrange bracket can be represented as a summation of three determinants which is being represented as jx jy and z jz this is not dot okay so with this at hand
to solve the perturbation problem what we need we need to evaluate evaluate the Langrange bracket C j comma C k and also R needs to be written in terms of the osculating elements C1, C2, etc. in order to get do r by do c j. So, different value of j we can evaluate uh, once its r is expressed in terms of c 1, c 2, to c 6. So, we can evaluate do r by do c j. So, the, this part here we write this as dou r by dou c j where this needs to be expressed as c 1 c 2 to c 6. Now, uh, I wind up uh, this part quickly and uh, we will move to the next lecture. So, in this part I just list few properties of the Langrange bracket. Or maybe we can uh, take it to the next lecture, it is ok, we will wind up here. Okay, so, uh, Thank you very much, we will move to the next lecture.